Heavenly Father, we are here together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before we uh, begin a uh, new week, Lord, we are now here to receive your words. We want to understand your words, Lord. Please give us spirit of wisdom and revelation and open our eyes of understanding so that we may be able to understand what your words mean and what we are supposed to behave ourselves upon hearing your words. All your words are spirit and life. With the Holy Spirit, nobody can understand your words. Lord, give us your spirit upon repentance, coming back to you, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah, I'm going uh, to read the book of Psalm, chapter 17. Okay? It is the uh, prayer of David. He was a king of Israel, right? How he prayed. Okay, You can listen to him. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goes not out of Feigned lips, let my sentence come from, come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that I equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of man, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou would, would hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. Shew thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou the saws uh, saves by thy right hand that which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppressed me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion huckling in secret places. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him, and him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From man which are thy hand, O Lord, from man of the world which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fears with thy heat treasures, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babies. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. You know, only hope of David is when he resurrect in the future, when Jesus resurrect, he want to be same as likeness of Jesus Christ. Yeah, this prayer must be our own to please God. Okay, let me read the book of Luke 16. 
verse 19 to 31. Okay, let me read very carefully, okay? You will see the hell and the bosom of Abraham, that is the paradise. Both of them located in the heart of the earth, okay? Whosoever, no, uh, verse 19. Excuse me, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell down from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and sees Abraham after off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed. So the day which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, and let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Yeah. You heard this message, right? It's a story. a real story. It's a real story. About one or certain rich man and uh, one beggar, his name is Lazarus. Or beggar has a name, but rich man has no name. Yeah, today's, you know, the the subject of this uh, uh, sermon is the end of those who receive their lot, their share, right, in this world. And during the last 6,000 years of Satan's reign in the earth, Satan has been tempting all people who live in the world to prevent them from seeing the eternal blessing that God has given given to them so that so they follow the lust of flesh and lust of eyes and the pride of life. All that is corrupted. Belong to the earth, right? They are still enjoying the things following their father. The first man, Adam, and consequently mistaking that is for a while as if eternal. 
They think, you know, the, 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 the world, you know, endure forever. No, it's not. God's word testifies to those who live for a little while to enjoy their lot, their shares in Satan's temptation, and those who see the eternal and everlasting portion of God in the coming world and eternity in his kingdom. Yeah, in the Bible, there are two kinds of people. First one is that, you know, has uh, their portion in the world. Not interesting in the inheritance prepared by God. Second, second, you know, group is giving our portion in the world, looking for eternal inheritance in the kingdom of God. Yeah, let me, you know, one by one, you know, help your understanding. Cain, the son of Adam, right? He just gave birth two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain, he stabbed Abel, his brother, to death. He believed in God and killed him for his lot in the world. Yeah, to occupy the lot in the world. He killed Abel. Only nor found grace in the eyes of God. Yeah, you know, that was in years passed by. Nor only Noah found grace in the eyes of God, but all other probably hundred, hundred billion people lived, you know, in the time of Noah. Beside him were also received their lot, corruptible lot in this world. And also in Sodom and Gomorrah, only one man, his name is Lot, was righteous, and all the rest of them sought for a portion in this world, and none remained. But all were destroyed by the fire and brimstone. The history proves of the two sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael, right? Isaac became the son of promise, but Ishmael and his descendants did not receive the promise and were merely those who received the lot of this world. Uh, for example, you know, Muslim countries, Arabic countries, right? Yeah, they're enjoying their lot in the world with the oil resources, right? Yeah, I would understand that. But they don't have, you know, any promise in the kingdom of God. Also, Isaac have two sons. First one, Esau, second one, Jacob. You know, Jacob regarded the promise of God as best precious, birthright. But all the nation that were with Esau at the time disregarded birthright, which God gave him, were also received in this world. And people of Israel, which God has chosen, has become a nation of promise, but all other nations have become partakers of this sinful world. But God, though their ancestors were not in the promise of God, as they are not in this world, but by giving grace through Jesus Christ the death and resurrection for Adam's sin and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it has opened the way for a life that enjoy the eternal inheritance of God through the life given to the nations in this world. That's why God so loved the world. He's given the only begotten Son, whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but receive everlasting life. This is the gospel. God teaches the story of a rich man without name who enjoyed the lot he shared in this world. And a man named Lazarus is a beggar for no lot in this world. No house, you know, no clothes, you know, no food, nothing. The rich man was living a luxurious life every day in purple and fine linen. Lazarus, on the other hand, lived on the doorstep of his rich man, full of sores of his body, hoping to fill with the crumbs from the rich man's table and even the dogs came and licked his sores. 
We can tell one difference between this rich man and the beggar. The rich man had no name, but the beggar had the name called Lazarus. In other words, this rich man was not the one God knows, but the beggar was the one whom God knew. This rich man was a partaker of this world, but even though this beggar lived the most miserable life in the world, Lazarus' name was recorded in the book of life of God. When Apostle Paul wrote to the Hebrews, he testified that, saying, and it, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. According to his testimony, Lazarus died and his rich man also died. After their death, judgment was given to each one, and Lazarus was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom, that is paradise, in the earth, and the rich man was judged, suffering, tormenting in hell. Yeah, we can see through the Bible that Abraham's bosom and hell exist inside the earth. In ancient times, Jonah said that his soul cried out in the belly of hell. And Jesus said that his soul would be in the heart of the earth like Jonah and that his soul would go down to hell to overthrow the sins of this world, including our sins. No one will know that there is tremendous fire, brimstone deep in the earth. There's no one that don't know, right? Don't know. There are tremendous fire and brimstone deep in the, in the earth. Everyone knows that the volcanic fire often pops up from the ground. In recent years, Jesus also spoke of what kind of fire in hell. Yeah, Jesus himself, you know, talking about hell. What kind of place. And if thine eye offend thee, Pluck it, not, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. It is also said that Abraham's bosom, which Lazarus was carried away by angels, and hell is seeing each other, and that there was a great gulf fixed between them, so that they could not come and go. This is why the Old Testament believers were able to be forgiven their sins by the blood of sacrifices that died for their sins whenever they sin by God's law. That's why even though they die, they didn't go to hell. They went to the bosom of Abraham, to their ancestor, inside the earth, they couldn't go to heaven until Jesus shed the blood for them. But after their death, they did not go to hell because of the covenant of the law but they could not ascend to heaven and went to the place where their father Abraham was. Hundred years later, when their promised Lord Jesus Christ died, the Old Testament saints who were in the bosom of Abraham rose from the grave, and when the Lord was resurrected, they came out of the tomb and went into the holy city, Jerusalem, and showed themselves saying, Oh, I am David, I am Moses, I am Messiah, you know, for example. On the cross, Jesus said to the one burglary who believed in him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The paradise was the bosom of Abraham where Lazarus was. He also came up with all the Old Testament saints who were in the bosom of Abraham when Jesus resurrected. Apostle Paul testified that paradise in the earth was moved to the third heaven 
by witnessing his third heaven as paradise. That's why the vision of Abraham, paradise inside the earth, is empty now, is moved to heaven, because all of them ascended to heaven. When he wrote to the saints of the church in Ephesus, again, he testified. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Yeah, they were in captive in, uh, you know, in, inside the earth, right? And gave gifts unto them. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended the first into the lower part of the earth. That means, you know, he descended in lower part, you know, bosom of Abraham. He took all, you know, people of Israel, you know, um, to, to, uh, and to, to heaven. In other words, when Jesus shed his blood and died, he rose to the heavens, uh, giving resurrection unto the Old Testament saints who were confined as a captivity in the paradise that was the bosom of Abraham, who could not ascend into heaven in the law. Therefore, now the bosom of Abraham is empty. So now the rich man in hell is still, still suffering day and night in the fire. Thousand, thousand years, he's still in there forever. No longer able to see Abraham and Lazarus. The important thing, the important thing we need to know is that the two died and the Lazarus was in the bottom of Abraham, bosom of Abraham, and that the rich was suffering in hell. Their bodies have already returned to corruption, but their souls were still alive. It is because God created man as a living soul cannot die. It is also the fact that the human soul has all the members of the human body, you know, hands and foot, you know, everything, eyes and nose, the tongue, all kind of organ. The rich man in hell saw Abraham and Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham with his own eye. We can see he already died. So, he saw, saw Abraham. In addition, he spoke to Abraham. He had also eye, mouth, tongue, with his own mouth and tongue, and so on. One important fact can be seen through the word given to us today. With so much pain, In the hell, in the midst of fire, the rich man asked Abraham. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him in my father's house, or I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the place of torment. The rich man said that if Lazarus was raised from the dead and went to the to them, his brothers would repent not to come to hell like him. At the time, Abraham said, And he said unto him, If they hear out Moses and prophets, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead, I answered. He answered. That's right. I bear my testimony that a lot of people, the share of people, are testifying. A lot of people are testifying of hell, saying they visited in this age. These testimonies may be beneficial to themselves, but they cannot make others repent. King David testified of those who received their lot in his life and those who deserve to receive the lot in the coming eternal kingdom of God. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou feeds with thy hid treasure, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babies. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Okay, upon hearing this message, we all are, should be able to answer unto the words of God. Whether we try to get share the lot in the world or try to 
eternal share in the kingdom of God. And after you choose that, if you really choose eternal one, you behave yourselves just like David, King David, that's just a rich man. So engrave all this message until he come to judge each of one us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless all of you. Amen.